ICP MS. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. I apologize, I shortened the title a little bit. And uh, good morning, everyone. I would like to thank the organization committee for giving us the opportunity to present one of our recent work on the absolute isotopic ratio measurements of lead by MC ICPMS. Multi collector inductively coupled plasma is a powerful research tool for the determination of isotopic ratio in a wide range of applications. For example, for study the age of the solar system in geoscience, the diagnostic biomarker for cancers in life science, and also study contamination sources in environmental science. Publication of MCICPMS has reached 1,500 annually in the last few years. Despite this, very few absolute and SI traceable isotopic ratio measurements by MCICPMS have surpassed the traditional thermal ionization mass spectrometry. This is because MCICPMS exhibits significantly large instrument isotopic fractionation, also called mass bias effect, compared to teams. And the efforts to address those effects are not trivial. In addition to commonly believed mass dependent fractionation observed within MCICPMS, mass independent fractionation was also reported with MCICPMS for a number of elements, such as for neodymium, cerium, tungsten, strontium, hafnium, barium. Our laboratory also observed the mass independent fractionation on strontium, germanium, lead, mercury, silica, osmium. Even worse, the mass independent fractionation varies significantly on different plasma conditions. As demonstrated in one of our recent st uh, study for osmium, and as you can see, the experiment slope, all the black dots, between 187 versus 188 versus 189, 188 shows a significant difference away from the, from the uh, uh, mass dependent fractionation Russell law, which is the red line in the center. So what is the impact of the observed mass independent fractionation for proper choice of a mass bias correction model for absolute isotopic ratio measurements is enormous because the biased results could occur if conditions are not met for that particular model employed. Here's uh, many of the mass bias correction model currently available in the literature. For example, all the traditional um, Russell law or power law mass independent fractionation correction model, the popular double spike on the second, then the standard sample bracketing method combined SSB with internal standard, and the optimized regression model. The last one is for gravimetric isotopic mixture. So when the analyte of the isotopes has mass independent fractionation, the choice is quite limited. You, only the last four mass bias models can be used. So when your system study, the isotopes do not have mass independent fractionation, the whole world is happy because all the mass bias correction models proposed in the literature can be used. However, without relying on any existing isotopic standard, only one model can be used, which is a full gravimetric isotopic mixture model. Now let's spend a few minutes on this model. When element with unstable isotopes, the FGIM model requires at the minimum measurements of all N minus one isotopic amount ratio in all N pure materials, and also in N minus one independent gravimetric mixture of any two enriched materials. So for example, for lead, we have a four ice isotopes, therefore we need four enriched uh, material, uh, 204 lead, 206 lead, 207, and 208. And also with a minimum three independent mixtures of any of the two pure isotopes. For example, you can use AB, BC, CD, or in the 
A, B, A, C, A, D, or any three of them can be used to derive all the three unknowns. In our study, we chose the bat experiment design by using all six independent mixtures and also use optimum one-to-one -one isotopic ratio in the mixture. For example, A, B, 2, 4, and 2, 6, we are designed to have a one-to-one -one ratio in that particular mixture. I will show you why we're doing this uh, in the results later on. So here's a, the slide that shows you the relationship based on ABCD and also ABADCD solution measurement. As you can see, and uh, the, uh, okay. the correct ratio, which is a big R, is linked by uh, isotopic ratio correction factor K with the measured ratio. So in three mixtures, the true ratio is associated with isotopic abundance and the masses of the enriched material used also atomic weight. Then in the two bottom equations, the isotopic abundance and the atomic weight of that particular uh, material can be related to the corrected or isotopic ratio and also isotopic ratio with the uh, uh, nuclear masses. So with all those equations, we can solve three unknowns, which is uh, isotopic ratio correction factor for three uh, isotopic ratios in the four uh, lead. Clearly, analytical solutions for K, for example, 208 and 206, based on this measurement, A, B, C, D, and those three mixtures is uh, very complicated. As you can see, they're all related with the measured ratio in all material and in the mixtures and with the masses of the uh, enriched material used. Of course, we have an alternative. And uh, a numerical irreactive approach can be used to derive the isotopic ratio correction factor, those so 3K, 204, 206, or 207, 206, and 28, 206, by starting K at the one within the previous seven equations I showed you to do that. So what is the advantages and disadvantages of this four gravimetric isotopic mixture model? So the advantage for this FGIM model is it does not require isotopic standard for calibration. The most important, the FGIM model does not require prior knowledge of isotopic composition of the calibrators, which is the the pure lead isotopes we're using here. However, purity of the enriched materials need to be known. That's because we need to prepare gravimetric mixtures to derive the three unknown Ks. The cost of material usually is quite expensive, and also you have to deal with the complexity in the mathematical calculation. So as I mentioned, we need to know the purity uh, at NRC, in our study, we used the GDMS, was used to determine one of the material, B206 lead. This is because we have enough large quantity which can be amendment for the GDMS analysis. Based on the two simple equations, we calculate the uh, chemical purity is at least 495. It's in agreement with provided purity by Oak Ridge National Laboratory. Unfortunately, for the other three material, A204, C207, and D28, they were only available in a form of brittle foil and it was not amenable to our GDMS analysis. Therefore, we used the high resolution ICPMS element XR, was used to measure all impurity elements relatively in A, C, D relative to B to derive the chemical purity of A, C, and D. As you can see, the material, the other three materials still pretty good at 3.9 chemical purity and with a little bit bigger uncertainty because of the another measurement involved. So, as I mentioned, we need to derive isovic uh, ratio correction factors since we used all six mixtures, so based on all four pure materials and all six mixtures, and also we only use the optimum one-to-one -one isotopic ratio in the mixture, for example, AB for 204, 206. 
Each data set generates 16 values for three cases, respectively. But when you look in a little bit more detail, only eight combinations involving the two enriched materials that is correspondent to the particular K. For example, AB for K204, 206, and in the bracketing shows you eight mixtures all involve AB in all the combinations, so only eight. So as shown on this slide on your left, you can see the black dots are shown for those well-tempered mixtures which using particular two isotopic ratios for that K. For example, AB for 2, 4, 2, 6. As you can see, the data for the black dots is more consistent. So we observed in significant improvements in case with using those well eight combinations. So for our final calculation, we used those eight values for each K. Since the FGIM measurement is a sequential measurement, so involving four enriched material and also six mixtures, so efforts was made in matching both analyte mass fractions and also metrics, and also adequate rinsing between each material to avoid any carryover. We also tuned the instrument to have a more stable signal and with a little longer warm-up time after one hour prior to our data analysis. Of course, we have uh, prepared another equal-led ELED with all ABCD equal amount of ratio for lead to monitor if we have significant drift during the sequence measurement. Due to this efforts, and uh, we did not uh, observe a significant uh, drift in ratio measurements, therefore the raw data was used in calculation. And we also use a static measurement in all the same line for cup configuration. So matching isotopic ratio to one to one was found to reduce the errors in isotopic dilution analysis. That's called exactly matching. So also suggesting maybe FGIM model two might exhibit more robust and performance when one to one ratio matching is employed. So we have prepared the first five sets of uh, mixtures, and uh, they are matched within like a B to D, like a couple percent. The first one matched within like a 15%. As you can see, the ratio measured of 28 to 6 are in agreement with the measurement uncertainty. However, when the last set we prepared is a significantly deviated from the one-to-one -one ratio, the different value was obtained. So clearly, for the FGIM model, matching isotopic amount ratio to one to one in the mixture also produced more consistent and robust results. That's what we use for the five sets of results. So that is a primary method. Another method is called optimized regression model with use NIST SRM thallium as a calibrator was also used to cross-check results obtained by FGIM model. So this model is based on the linear relationship observed between your analyte and your calibrate. So I'm gonna explain this regression model a little bit. So the regression model was initially proposed 20 years ago, but it's from a Russell law, which is a mass-dependent fractionation law from the first equation then derived. So the analyte isotopic ratio has a linear relationship with the calibrate, the reference. So by using both intercept and the slope, with that simple equation, you can calculate a true ratio. So our group further developed this regression model. We are not using the traditional mass by fraction assumptions. We have started with the first principle, the true ratio is linked by isotopic ratio correction factor with the measured ratio. So derive the center, the uh, equation for calibration, same thing, the analyte and the reference uh, has linear relationship. Then by using the last equation, we can obtain mass bias corrected ratio, true ratio. 
So with this ratio, our germanium and indium was measured using this modified regression model, and the results has been adopted by IOPEC for the best available isotopic composition measurements and also atomic weight. However, the measurement in the early days was at optimum plasma condition. In the other words, means we measured at a fixed IF power. The instrument is quite stable, especially after warming up. Therefore, we need a much longer measurement time for each session. So in the early days, we use six to 15 hours to generate in enough uh, drift in the linear relationship. So this is uh, why this model was not widely adopted in the early days. In the last few years, there's an exciting further development. Initially, this was uh, proposed by uh, Dmitry Mero Lonvosky at LGC by uh, measuring at an equal change of F power from uh, plus or minus range around that optimum power, 20 volts per step, 11 points measurements. He was able to reduce the measurement time from 6 to 15 hours to 30 minutes. So our group adopted this uh, uh, measurement strategy and modified a little bit. We measuring at an equal increment from optimum half power and up to the power when signal drop 25%. This is a, a generate a little bit more robust uh, plasma. With any measurement points from three to 11 points, you can generate a linear relationship. So for time, it will be eight to 30 minutes for each measurement session. So this optimized regression model was successfully applied for the determination of uranium isotopic com composition and also for the osmium isotopic ratio measurements in our group. So the osmium isotopic ratio measurements, I think, is the best ever calibrated measurements so far existing. So the advantage is the optimized motion is a cost-effective model, the no metrics, no need to matching, and the validated methods. To calibrate with nitrogenium and uh, thallium, we have measurements within 10 to the 4, but you need isotopic standard for other elements for calibration. So with those two models, we can see the results by using two models is in excellent agreement. As a result of this study, NRC was able to produce a certified reference material for lead, a common lead standard. So in conclusion, this is the first independent lead isotopic ratio measure model uh, measurements since uh, pioneer work conducted at NIST in the early 60s. Good agreement between those two methods was uh, within few parts in 10 to the 4. And uh, as I mentioned already, the optimized regression model is a cost-effective model compared to primary method. The gravimetric isotopic mixture model is applied successfully for lead measurements, but we do suggest that this method is employed only with careful selected pairs of mixtures and which are all designed to produce a one-to-one -one ratio. And I believe we still need a more development in SI transport isotopic standards, enriched isotopes, and also state-of-the-art mass bias correction models uh, to further advance uh, metrology in this area. And uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs>